Good evening everyone, time for another silver update. This is the daily chart of silver provided by netdania.com. You can click on the link below. I've drawn some trend lines in here, the primary downtrend line and the primary uptrend line. Uptrend line goes back to basically the uh, bottom of uh, the financial uh, crisis. The downtrend line goes from that $50 peak. So you can see we broke through the downtrend line and are now correcting back. You can see this critical cross point here that we have. The other trend line is the trend line on the MACD. You can see the MACD was about to round up and we got that uh, employment number smack down and we turned down. So we're in negative territory on the daily MACD. Uh, we're oversold for a couple months, but really to be oversold uh, for the year, we actually need to penetrate this low and to be oversold for all time in the recent move, we need to penetrate this low. So that's a long ways away. How much support is offered by this long-term trend line? I think actually quite a bit. We're starting to turn up in the short term and uh, I get a lot of criticism about why I look at these charts. Well, these charts are not predictive of what's going to happen. Uh, they're simply what has happened. And uh, people often point out, well, they're, the price is rigged, so uh, that's meaningless. Well, no, it's not meaningless. This is the rigging. So what you're looking at is the process of the rigging. The rigging is done through the COMEX. It's done through the paper contracts. That is what you're looking at, the price of those contracts. So it is, in my opinion at least, uh, educational to look and see what happens. Now, we have a big election tomorrow. Uh, I'm not so much interested in what happens as I am interested in, to, in the market's reaction to what happens so I'm going to be watching the markets very closely tomorrow to see how they react to the news and what that means. Now the big story of the night is going to be the DTCC. This is something that Bix Weir has sent something out about. It's about Hurricane Sandy and uh, the paper, uh, paper derivatives. That's what the DTCC is involved in. We're going to look at that but first Let's go over and look at the questions of the night. Uh, the first one is from Ivan, and that's on inflation. Hey, BGF, most of us expecting inflation due to helicopter Ben printing money, but can they control inflation with digital money also? And if so, could the inflation that we, we are waiting for could take much longer, or am I missing something? Well, it's correct that most of the money is digital money. And uh, that money, uh, that doesn't mean that that money can't flow in a particular direction. Uh, most of the paper derivatives, whether they're uh, investments in commodities or in stocks or in bonds, they're all going to be paper. They're all going to be digital. But the question is, where does that money flow? Now, up to the present time, they've done a very good job of sterilizing the money at least uh, I think the saying is that uh, you have deflation in the things that you own and you have inflation in the things that you need. That pretty much has held true so far. Now, that doesn't mean that that has to hold true in the future. Uh, if history is any guide, then the people who think they're in control of things can very quickly lose control and uh, things can spin out of control. That's something we're going to watch very closely. So it's possible that the money that has been forced into bonds has been forced into stocks, has been forced away from precious metals. It may actually turn and go the other direction. That is always a possibility. And the next question is from Silver Eagle 65. Hello, Brother John F. Last Friday, with the release of the non-farm payroll data and the latest smackdown of nearly 5% drop in silver, it has me begging a question to get answered. Is there anything true, real, 
not manipulated or honestly traded in silver anywhere in any market. I wondered if there's any fizz counted or is it only paper that is marketed. This seems strange that the CFTC doesn't see this as a problem. This is the news headline I'm describing, 192 million ounces of paper silver. Nearly a quarter of annual global silver production were dumped on the market in only 10 minutes between 8.30 and 8.40 a.m. Eastern Standard Time upon the release of the non-farm payroll data. Well, that's something that I've pointed out many times. It's, it's not a matter of the fact that you have buyers and sellers because in any of the futures markets, you're going to have a large number of buyers and sellers. And for the most part, those people don't take delivery. They settle in cash. So that's not unusual for a futures market to be primarily settled in cash. What is unusual is that in the silver market, you have a very large contingent of paper sellers. And those paper sellers tend to be the banks and so the question one would ask is that uh, obviously if you listen to the rhetoric from the central bank and the bankers for the last many years they'll tell you that the gold standard is a barbarous relic of course silver is not even to be mentioned uh, so if it's true that the gold standard is a barbarous relic and silver is simply an industrial commodity then the question you have to ask is who are these paper sellers of silver why are they selling so much paper silver and uh, what is their interest in doing so and I think that if you look at the numbers you have to answer that question in the sense that it is being manipulated in other words the people who are selling silver don't have a real interest in silver probably don't have any silver and the reason they're selling it down is because they fear the power of silver to expose the currency for what it is, which is uh, unbacked fiat paper currency. And of course, that's going to indicate that it's not the minions, whether they be, uh, I think, as Bixware has followed uh, Solomon and then uh, Bear Stearns and then JP Morgan and now apparently Citigroup. We don't know. But uh, obviously, those players you can't see any rational reason why they would have an interest in physical silver suppressing physical silver and and using paper silver to do so why they would have any interest in paper silver at all unless they're operating as minions for the federal reserve and the treasury and those who have the most to lose i think the uh question a qui bono who has the most to gain you can ask that in reverse who has the most to lose clearly the people that have the most to lose if the paper silver manipulation ends is going to be the people who issue the u.s dollar and last question uh, two questions actually on jim sinclair jim sinclair's latest this is from egg scrambler hi brother john f I'm a bit addicted to your video. I listen in the morning. Any medication you recommend? Um, I don't know. Is it going to be the blue pill or the red pill? Jim seems to imply a big difference depending on who gets elected. It sounds like he means if Obama is reelected, gold shoots up rapidly or the other way around. I'm not sure which he's talking about and why. I'm pretty sure they will both do about the same spending just under a different rhetoric. What do you think? And he links the uh, the JS Mindset article. So let's try to parse this carefully because uh, Jim Sinclair has kind of been, I will say, uh, hard to understand and uh, kind of perplexing. So let's read this and try to parse this out. Dear my friends, the thesis of the mainstream media is that, quote, nothing must ever disturb the social order. Mother Nature can do this in seconds, and an overnight collapse of confidence in a dollar will do it in three days. Currency-induced cost-push inflation is what will collapse confidence overnight and cause an explosion in the velocity of money in three days. Study history. It has happened before. It will happen again. Although you will not want to hear this, it is true. Ben Bernanke is the only person in the U.S. financial management that thoroughly understands the mess that has been made. 
that which I have taught you. His action with QE is the only tool to buy time. QE is the only way the can gets kicked down the road for three years, preventing sometime a total collapse. To fire Bernanke will be the single greatest error made in U.S. financial management ever. We are over the cliff and in a free fall. Anyone speaking austerity and the dollar is unknowingly speaking about the final Western world financial collapse without any remedy within nine months. If they knew, they would keep their mouths shut. What I know and Bernanke knows is that your vote next week in the USA is for immediate nine-month collapse or for the test coming between 2015-2017, you have the right to select the time of the end. This choice of leadership is between the devil you know or the devil you do not know. Okay, so how do you parse what he's saying here? I think it's pretty clear what he's saying is that if Romney is elected, he's going to fire Bernanke. And if he fires Bernanke, it's going to cause a financial crisis, uh, an immediate financial crisis. In fact, if he's elected, it will be inherently implied that he will fire Bernanke and the financial crisis could happen in three days. So the question that I would ask Jim Sinclair is if you already agree that there is going to be a total collapse, why is it that you would prefer the total collapse to occur in the time frame of 2015 to 2017 rather than within nine months? So I think that's what he's saying. And uh, I think he's saying that collapse is inevitable, but your choice tomorrow is going to be to vote for Romney, which will cause collapse in nine months, or to vote for Obama, which will mean collapse in three or four years. So what does that mean? I don't know. Uh, it seems to be that he's implying something very dire. Uh, I think that most libertarians would say, well, let's bring it on. Let's bring on the collapse. And I guess if you're not ready for the collapse, then you would probably want to push that off. So I guess the main question comes down to, are you ready for the collapse right now? I'm pretty much ready for the collapse. I, I don't know if it's going to be a deflationary or hyperinflationary blowout, but I think that uh, Jim has made it clear that uh, one way or the other, we're going to get a collapse. The only question is time and how long it is for that to occur. So let's get over to the main story of the night. That's going to be the DTCC. There is a issue from Bix Weir on the public link about the DCCC. But before we get to that, let's look at the news story that triggered all this. We had Hurricane Sandy. This is from November 2nd. And we have stock certificates feared damaged by Sandy. Trillions of dollars worth of stock certificates and other paper securities that were stored in a vault in lower Manhattan may have suffered water damage from Superstorm Sandy. The Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation, an industry-run clearing house for Wall Street, said the contents of its vault are likely damaged after its building at 55 Water Street sustained significant water damage. <laughs> no, people, I don't make this stuff up. From the storm that battered New York City's financial district earlier this week, the vault contains certificates registered to Seed and Company Seed, a subsidiary of DTCC, as well as custody certificates in sealed envelopes that belong to clients. The DTCC provides custody and asset servicing for more than 3.6 million securities worth an estimated 36.5 trillion dollars according to the website so wow that's a big story so let's look at the DTCC real quick before we look at the Bix Weir analysis this is the Wikipedia entry depository trust and clearing corporation 
the Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation headquartered at 55 Water Street in New York City is the world's largest post-trade financial services company. DTCC was established in 1999 as a holding company to combine the Depository Trust Company and the National Securities Clearing Corporation. It was set up to provide an efficient and safe way for buyers and sellers of securities to make their exchange and thus clear and settle transactions. It also provides central custody of securities. User owned and directed, it automates user owned and directed. So that's interesting. That's the first flag there. Let's click that link. Well, that's a dead link. So we don't know who these users are that own it. User owned and directed, it automates, centralizes, standardizes, and streamlines processes that are critical to the safety and soundness of the world's capital markets. Through its subsidiaries, the DTCC provides clearance, settlement, and information services for equities, corporate and municipal bonds, unit investment trusts, government and mortgage-backed securities, money market instruments, and over-the-counter derivatives. It also manages transactions between mutual funds and insurance carriers and the respective investors. So that is the paper gold mine. That's the big, that's the big one. Uh, we're talking about all of the paper and who owns it and all of that coming into question. So let's get over to the Bixware article, DTCC fraud cover up in progress. I've been ranting for a long, long time about the DTCC and how it is the hub of criminal activity in our free markets. The Depository Trust and Clearing Corporation provides clearing, settlement, and information services for equities, corporate and municipal bonds, government and mortgage-backed securities, money market instruments, and over-the-counter derivatives. Basically, it is the mothership of all documentation, repositories, throughout the entire spectrum of financial transactions and it is where evil lurks in the shadows massive failures to deliver massive fractional reserve stock certificate fraud facilitator of high frequency trading phony certificates and massive amounts of duplicate share certificates did you know that when you buy a stock in your brokerage firm doesn't even purchase anything on your behalf it just goes into their pool of IOUs to be netted out at some future date that never actually comes. Proof of massive banking fraud lies in the DTCC archive and now it is being purged. So that is a huge story. There's definitely something there. Where there is smoke, there is fire. Now if we go back to the Wikipedia article, we can see here that the DTCC is connected directly to the controversy over naked short selling. So I've done explanations of this in the past, but I want to explain to you so you understand how this works with stock certificates. Now, I have, for example, a TD Ameritrade account. If you remember, I covered the put option on the AGQ, and that's the account I like to play with to take money out of and put money in just for play money. This is a stock account that uh, is registered and uh, the way it works is that if you have a stock account it could be through Fidelity, uh, Merrill Lynch who's now someone else, any of the stock brokerages if you have a stock brokerage account and you buy and sell stock if you buy stock in that stock brokerage account you can either hold your stock in street name and that's what gives the ability to short the stock. So uh, let's take shorting as an example. Let's say that I go into TD Ameritrade in my account and I'm very bearish on Apple, which I've been for quite some time. And I decide I want to short Apple stock. Now for me to short Apple stock, I have to borrow that stock and sell it on the market. That means I have to borrow those shares from someone who owns it. The only way I can borrow those shares from someone who owns it is if someone else in my brokerage, TD Ameritrade, owns that stock but also owns that stock in street name. When they buy that stock and hold that stock in street name, they agree 
that that stock can be loaned to someone who's going to short it. And uh, you see that often with uh, some of the fraudulent shorts uh, or actually fraudulent companies. You don't have the ability to short. So when you go in to try to short the stock, they tell you that there isn't any shares available. That's because there aren't any held in street name. So when you hold your stock in street name, that means it's available to short. And essentially that means that it's held at the DTCC. Now you have an alternative you can actually take delivery of the stock certificates. You can tell your broker that you don't want your stock held in street name. Let's say you own 100 shares of Apple and you bought them at TD Ameritrade and you call up TD Ameritrade and say, hey, I've got 100 shares of Apple. I want the stock certificates. I don't want it held in street name. I want you to send me those certificates. Now, they will actually mail those out to you where you can physically hold those certificates. Now, uh, again, this is still just paper, but you are no longer a creditor of the DTCC. You're no longer a creditor of your brokerage. You become a creditor of Apple computer. You're actually an owner, but uh, if Apple goes bankrupt, then of course you're a creditor. But uh, at that point, your relationship is directly between you and the company. So, Taking delivery of physical stock certificates is somewhat similar to taking delivery of uh, physical silver. Now, again, it's a piece of paper, but you actually have that piece of paper in your hand, your percentage ownership of that company. Now, the issue of naked short selling, if you followed the issue with Overstock.com and uh, Patrick, the CEO, who's talked a lot about the DTCC and naked short selling. If you have short sellers, then obviously they're borrowing those shares from either the brokerage or the DTCC. And the question becomes, do those shares exist? Are they counterfeiting those shares or can they have failures to deliver when they're required to deliver and they don't get them? And that's what we see with the controversy of naked shorting. The DTCC is right in the middle of that. So it's very interesting. It's very concerning that uh, we have this news with the DTCC coming into question with the stock certificates being damaged these physical stock certificates being damaged. Now, if you remember with the mortgage scandal, you had a very serious issue as to the physical location and the physical existence of these mortgage papers. That's why you ended up with this type of uh, clearing house that they, they've set up because they probably can't deliver them. There have been lawsuits and a lot of stuff. But this is going to be the next step in the questionable paper situation, a threat to the very existence of these DTCC shares. We're talking about $36.5 trillion worth of paper. So we're starting to see some of the rumbling about what is coming. And of course, what is coming is either hyperinflation or default. And in either case, you're going to be talking about having to have your hands on the physical metal, the physical stock certificates. But really, uh, what do those stock certificates represent if the entire system collapses? So the main thing is to have physical possession of your gold and of your silver, because when the entire paper Ponzi scheme goes up in smoke and we don't know when that's going to be but we're hearing rumblings we're seeing hints at what's coming with the DTCC being called into question you want to have that physical silver in your possession and we'll talk to you next time